Hey everybody, welcome back to Awaken the Wonder. I am your host, Caleb Wampler. And uh, if I look like I gained a little bit of weight, you probably did too. Happy Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> we had an incredible time uh, celebrating with our family. But uh, as you actually watch this, we are actually on our way to South Asia for the premier crusade of our lifetime. You might wonder why. Well, friends, it's because to date, and Carlos, if you want to throw that graphic on the screen, we have seen 988,000 people that have come to Jesus Christ in these gospel campaigns. And tomorrow, uh, in just two days from the time of this recording, we will be going to the field in South Asia, in the bush, preaching the gospel, and this week, we expect more than 75 to 100,000 people over our three-night gospel campaign. And I say this to say, please pray for us right now. We're going in, and uh, we are expecting, with this crusade, to surpass the one million soul mark. It's going to be absolutely incredible. We are, whew, and I feel the presence of God right now thinking about it. Uh, we're so excited for this moment. It's a huge, huge moment. But guess what? Then one million friends is only going to be the floor of where we're headed next as we go after the billion soul harvest. Thank you so much for everybody who has continued to support this ministry and stand with us. Right off the top, I want to thank you guys for subscribing, leaving a rating, and helping us as we go into the nations and continue to preach the gospel. Now, I want to take you guys in a continuance of what we've been talking about with the Holy Spirit. He's my friend. I love him so much. And last week we talked all about uh, some of the giftings that are the revelation gifts. This week we're going to be talking about the power gifts. If you did not see last week's episode, this is going to make a lot more sense if you go back and watch it. Uh, play, please go ahead and do that. But just as a recap, we're, we talked about the revelation gifts. And these were the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of knowledge, and the gifts of discerning of spirits. These gifts are part of the larger nine gifts that are talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. And just as a recap, I'm going to start here in verse 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives the message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, another the ability to prophesy, and he gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from God or another spirit. Still another person, he gives the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another person is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts, and he alone decides which gift each person should have. <coughs> With these gifts, you're going to see that there are nine of them listed here. And last week, we talked about the first three, wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Go back and hear the epic stories that I told you of just some of the ways God has moved in one of the most powerful moments I've ever seen in my personal life. But the point of the Holy Spirit doing this is that he's giving these things, number one, as he said in verse seven, to help people. It's all about helping people. Number two, if you look in Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit comes, he comes to give power. Power to do what? To witness. These are actually evangelistic tools that help us share our faith. Um, and we're seeing this all around the world. Uh, 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 the giftings of the Holy Spirit, they're, they're just incredible. And uh, they're almost too much to even hardly mention. And, and I'll, 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 as I go into this, I, I'll, I'll mention a couple stories, but... Um, the first three, as I said, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, and the gift of the discerning of spirits. These three are what we call the revelation gifts because they're flowing in the spirit of wisdom and revelation to operate in these. But today's gifts, we want to talk about the power gifts. And these power gifts are the gift manifestations that do something. The revelation gifts were gifts, uh, gifts that know something. The power gifts are gifts that do something. Now, the first one we'll talk about is the gift of faith. The gift of faith is the God-given supernatural ability to passively receive a miracle or miracles. Now, faith is 
without a doubt, uh, one of the things that marks this ministry to its core. Um, we have seen modern day weather miracles by not backing down from a crusade, fog lifting over cities, tsunamis literally going around where we're supposed to be. This is this is something we see often. One of the things I'll mention is the gift of stepping within without the money. Um, I have over and over again seen God do this. One time we got on a plane without $25,000. Another time we got on a plane without $43,000 without having the money. And some are like, hey, you're stupid, you're foolish. But I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that God had asked us to go to these nations and to believe God for the impossible. And when we did, when we stepped into that, these the gift of faith stepped in. I remember the gift of faith, it, it sounds weird to other people. People think you've fell off your rocker, you've lost your mind, you're a little bit crazy. And the truth is, let's be honest, if you're operating in the gift of faith, you probably uh, look all, very crazy to the world. <laughs> I remember the one of the craziest ones to me was when uh, the two nations of Pakistan and India were on the brink of war. Now, if you are uh, familiar with just the world a little bit and how things work, Pakistan and India, they, they don't really like each other typically too much. And um, this isn't to spread any hate or anything like that. They just they just have kind of been at war off and on for a long time. Um, this is a little bit deeper than a friendly rivalry of the Vikings versus the Packers in football or Duke versus North Carolina in college basketball. This is real. This is war. And um, there was one of the planes had flown over one of the countries, one of the neighboring countries shot it down, and uh, the pilots used their parachutes and were captured in enemy territory. And it turned into this crazy situation. Now, meanwhile, we were supposed to go in and do a gospel campaign. And um, at the time, they actually, the the country shut down the airspace over the entire country, like literally shut it down. No planes, unless you were pretty much the president, you weren't flying in that nation, not military, not commercial. Nobody was flying. They were on the brink of potentially a war. And yet um, they didn't end up, uh, they ended up kind of holding off, thankfully, and praise God, it, it all worked out. But at the middle of this, we were supposed to get on a flight and fly in for our campaign. And a lot of people said, you know, you need to cancel this. They're on the brink of war. You could die. Like I'm hearing everything in the book. And there was something I'll just say with my wife, Harmony and myself, um, there was something different. Like with, as we looked at with her and as I prayed about this, she's just like, you got to go. I was like, I know I got to go. And I remember at the time, my friend Joshua, who's a dear part of this ministry, he was in a different state and he was like, I'm going to go. <laughs> and so uh, without much support from a lot of other people, we had the gift of faith for this thing. And I'm like, we're going to go and the country is going to open up and we're getting in for this gospel campaign. I went to the counter. I talked to the airline attendant. They said, sir, your flight has been canceled. You cannot go to this nation because the airspace has been shut down. And I said, I'm, I'm going to the nation. And they're like, sir, the plane isn't going there anymore. I said, okay, well then I'll book a one-way flight to uh, the layover area in Dubai. I'll go to Dubai. And so I changed my ticket to a one-way ticket to Dubai. One way. <laughs> when I get there, after a long flight, there's people everywhere. The busiest I've ever seen this world-class airport ever. There's people everywhere. Because most of them are from these nations where the airspace is cl closed down and they can't get home. <clears throat> They're literally stranded in the airports waiting, crying, kids are crying. It's bananas in this world-class airport. It looked like a zoo of people just everywhere. And I get there and I'm like, okay, well, the first step is I made it here. Now I just need to go find the counter and I need to get a ticket to go to this nation. And they say, uh, so then I start praying in the Holy Spirit. And the whole time I'm like, I'm getting on an airplane. I just knew it. 
everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. I got stopped in line four different times by airline people. Like, are you sure you're in the right line, sir? I'm like, yeah, that's where I'm going. And they're like, uh, sir, this place is closed. You can't go here. The airline is closed. Uh, the airspace for the whole country is closed. Like you cannot get here. And I said, yeah, I'm fully aware of that, but um, this is the right line, right? They're like, yeah, this is the right line. So I continued to wait in line, praying in the spirit for about uh, five hours. I prayed in the spirit and I finally get to the front of the line. I had to pee so bad. <laughs> I got up there and the guy in front of me loses his mind and reaches over the counter and almost starts shaking the person that's airline attendant. He had to get carried away by security. It was like insane. Uh, like I'm going and now I've got to go up. I'm the next person after this guy. <laughs> and they're like, hello, sir. I'm like, how can I help you? And I said, hi, I'd like a ticket to go to this nation, please. And they said, sir, as you know, the air, this uh, country has closed its airspace. So there's nothing I can do for you. I said, no, I understand that. But uh, could you just check one more time, please? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, uh, huh? I said, yeah, just look one more time. And he goes, okay. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay, sir. It, um, it looks like a flight just opened up right now for this nation. Uh, you can go here. They said, sir, do you have a ticket and I can change your ticket over? I said, um, I actually don't have a ticket anymore. I did have a ticket but I had to change my flight to a one-way flight. So um, this was my old ticket, but um, I don't have a ticket. I was hoping you could give me one. And they said, uh, you don't have a ticket? I said, no. I said, this was the original ticket, but I don't have it anymore. He looks at me a little puzzled, types it in. He's like, uh, okay, type some more. He goes, here you go, sir, here's the ticket. And he gives me a ticket onto the plane. <laughs> Friends, I didn't even have, I didn't pay for it. I didn't, I, I didn't pay for it. I didn't have the money. Like he never asked me for payment. I didn't have a ticket. He just gives me a free ticket onto the plane. So much so that when I called the airline company, it didn't have a booking code. They said, how do you have an airline ticket without a booking code? <laughs> they were confused. They're like, just show up at the airport and hopefully it'll work, you know? And sure enough, I get on the plane and everything was fine. <laughs> I ended up going to that gospel campaign and more than 70 thousand people over five nights gave their lives to Christ. The Lord moved powerfully. We were on the very first plane into the country when the airspace opened back up. It just goes to show you that was the gift of faith, friends. We can walk in this thing. We can have the supernatural ability from God to believe for miracles, that anything is possible. And this can be done and walked in by a believer. When you feel the Lord stirring your heart for faith, friends, walk in it. This story that I just told you never would have happened if while I was standing in Orlando, Florida, at the counter for this airline, for Emirates, if I wouldn't have told them, book me a one-way ticket, change my ticket, and just get me to the next spot, and I'll trust the Lord from there. Most of us would have just said, okay, it's closed. We'll have to cancel and try again next time. Because that's what most of us do. We just let life happen to us. But friends, when you got the gift of faith and a word from the Lord, whew, man, I feel the fire of God right now. Go! <laughs> you can do it! And just watch God put supernatural puzzle pieces into place for His glory and His honor. This is the gift of faith, friends. You can walk in this thing. A second area I'd like to talk about is the gift of healing. Now, the gift of healing is the supernatural manifestation for the healing of sicknesses or diseases without any natural source or means. Now, I don't have, uh, I, with this ministry, I, I won't talk about this for a lot of time. <laughs> Friends, just go on our YouTube channel and you can <laughs> check out healing after healing after healing after miracle after miracle. Healing is pretty self-explanatory. You had cancer. Now you don't have cancer. You had a tumor, now you don't have a tumor. You had a headache, now you don't have a headache. You know, it could be as extreme or as simple as maybe you would feel it to be, but it's all supernatural to God. And to the person who receives a healing, it doesn't matter how small you think it is or how much you doubt it. When you have the gift of healing, friends, this is one of the best evangelistic tools that there are. 
because you can walk up to anybody on the streets, anybody all around, say, hey, can I pray for you? And just release the healing power of God into their life. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it's very self-explanatory. But friends, don't just, the biggest thing I'll say is don't just pray at altars for healing. (laughs) Don't just pray in a church building for healing. Don't just pray when there's a prayer list sent out. Pray on all occasions and pray for deliverance. Pray for freedom. Pray for God to do something supernatural and he will do it and he will surprise you. But it doesn't happen unless we open our mouth in a voice activated kingdom and declare healing over people. People ask, well, what happens if I pray and they don't get healed? You know what? God can handle himself and he'll be just fine. It's our job to pray and to believe. And friends, he will do it in Jesus name. Um, I just want to go ahead and remind you guys, if, you, if you're saying, look, I want to see faith in action. I want to see healing in action. I want to invite you to join us, to come with us to the nation of Brazil. This coming May, we're going there and we're going to be bringing 30 to 40 Americans with us. There's still a little bit of space left. A lot of the space is full. We have a few spots left. Why don't you roll that video and let's check out Brazil. Hey everybody, Evangelist Caleb Wampler here. I want to invite you to join us in the nation of Brazil. It's coming this May 2024. We're going to be leaving on Wednesday, May 15th from the United States and traveling all the way to South America. Uh, We'll be arriving on Thursday, uh, Thursday, May 16th, and then also staying through Rio de Janeiro, into Sa Jose dos Campos, which is outside of Sao Paulo, and be spending time in multiple places doing church ministry, street evangelism, heading into revival services. We're going to be going into a favela and ministering to uh, the areas controlled by the gangs as well, and uh, also going to be ministering in uh, through boat ministry and going out to places that only can be accessed by the boat. So there is a lot of amazing ministry that's going to be taking place. And we have not been able to do one of our official team trips for some time because COVID-19 hit and things got a little bit crazy. Uh, The world of international travel slowed down, but we are excited to extend this opportunity to you. This is going to be a team ministry evangelism trip. If you've ever wanted to get activated in seeing the sick healed and praying for the sick and watching God do amazing miracles, um, praying for people that uh, of other cultures that need salvation and ministering to them by street evangelism. You may say, well, I don't know Portuguese, so how could I communicate with them? We're going to have interpreters and people to help you and connect with you. We're going to be praying uh, for, for people from all across the area and praying as the Lord leads. There may be deliverance ministry. There may be need for healing. There may be need for uh, God to do amazing signs and wonders. There may be need for uh, ministering to the poor and to the rich alike. Uh, Brazil is such a unique place, and I've been there five times, and I've seen God do incredible things in this region, and I want to invite you to join me to see it too. I'm excited to also invite you to join other members of our team from all across the United States, and we're going to be seeing amazing things take place all over the region. So come with us May 15 to 23. You can go to kingdomencounters.us slash team trip kingdomencounters.us slash team trip and join me, join our team to be activated in the supernatural and to see God do amazing things in our midst. We're also going to be going to Christ the Redeemer, the famous monument site as well, as well as some other uh, of my personal favorite things to do in Brazil. And you're going to get to have a front row seat for some of the fun things there as well, in addition to all of the ministry. So cannot wait to invite you guys to join us May 15 to 23, 2024. God bless you guys. Register today and let's see you in Brazil. So if you want to see faith and healing in action, friends, join us this coming fall and you're going to get activated uh, in Brazil. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. And I thank the Lord for him doing a work in your life this coming May. It's going to be great. Now, I want to dive into the last gift of the Spirit for this section, the power gifts. And this is, again, the gift manifestations that do something. For this gift, we're going to talk about miracles, the gift of miracles. And this is a supernatural intervention by God in the everyday, ordinary course of nature. A supernatural intervention by God. 
during the uh, everyday, ordinary course of nature. Now, I mentioned earlier um, that we've seen modern day weather miracles and we've prayed for God to lift fog over cities, to move the rain around our city. Uh, we have seen this over and over again where the weather forecast is 100% chance of rain and it happens with weather more often than anything. Um, 100% chance of rain and then all of a sudden there's no rain <laughs> over and over again. But one of the ones I'd like to mention is um, a story that happened to my parents where I was there actually as a small child. But this story has uh, marked my life and is a very powerful story. Um, if you've heard of the feeding of the 5,000, where the, Jesus breaks the loaves and the fish and feeds the 5,000 people and the 4,000 people, this is uh, a story kind of like that. But it happened in modern day United States of America, California. And I was a little kid at the time. We were holding this giant outreach. And my parents were uh, were believing for the community center in this little city to be filled up with people from all around. And they were going to preach the gospel. We're going to do a production. And people were going to come to Christ. And the way that they had been advertising is that every single child that comes to this thing is going to receive a free Christmas present. Now, there was a lot of underprivileged uh, people in our community um, there was a lot of low income areas around and uh, a lot of kids and families, they couldn't get presents for their kids. And so as this this uh, tool of offering a gift to every family for their kid, um, we a bunch of people in our church got together. We all chipped in. I was just a kid, so I was kind of along for the ride. But uh, we all were chipping in for uh, presents and with, with our own money and our own church people's money, they were buying presents for these kids and believing. And we dreamed and believed uh, for approximately 200 presents. Like this community center only set like 800 to 1,000 people. We're going to have 200 presents. It's going to be this trip of a, uh, this moment of a lifetime for these families. So the time came and the event came and the doors opened. The place got flooded. Standing room only. Fire code was soon broken. And more than 400 kids showed up, 400 kids at this small little community center with only approximately 150 to 200 presents ready. My dad and my mom lost their minds, freaking out, scared. <laughs> like, what is going to happen here? God, please. They didn't really even have the faith for the gift of faith or for the gift of miracles to see the miracle. But God used their mustard seed that they had. And they prayed a weak little prayer that night. And they said, God, I guess we'll just give out the prayer, give out the presents until the presents are gone. And then all these children, like, they might just walk away brokenhearted and we're going to break our promise that every kid was going to get a kid, uh, get a gift. But they prayed, Lord, if you would just multiply the presents, <laughs> please, <laughs> please, if you would just multiply the presents. Um, and maybe, Lord, you could do a miracle. Very, very weak prayer, not really walking in faith or miracles. But something very peculiar happened. And as they began to hand out the presents, they gave the salvation call and then started giving out presents to every kid. One by one, by one, by one, by one, by one, by one, over and over. And the pile was sitting there and they just kept giving them and kept giving them, kept giving them. More than 200 kids come through the line and they're still giving them, still giving them, still giving them. More than 300 400 kids, bam, passing them out. So the last kid came and they gave out the last present and they looked and they still had presents left over from that night. Friends, nobody else bought any more presents. Nobody else wrapped any more presents that night. That night, because my parents were willing to preach the gospel to their small city and their community and believe God for the impossible, that night every kid got a toy and a Christmas present and, um, and then some to all of the hundreds of extra presents that were that were provided that night. And I say all that to say, when you preach the gospel, friends, miracles happen all the time. I feel the presence of God even now. In our crusades, we're seeing this. We're seeing Weather Day miracles because we're preaching the gospel. We're seeing rain part and tsunamis part because we're preaching the gospel. We're seeing the power of God displayed because we're preaching the gospel. We're, we're seeing financial miracles take place because we're sowing seed into the gospel. 
If you will preach the gospel, give to the gospel, believe for the impossible in these areas, friends, God is going to come through. I'd love to hear your stories of these areas, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, and the gift of miracles. And if you've seen these giftings displayed in your life, I'd love for you to leave comments in the chat. I'd love to hear these stories and what God has done for you and how this has been displayed. Please share them with me. I'm curious. I, I want to know your stories. I want to hear them. I want to hear how God has used you in these areas. I love you guys. I bless you here from the studio. And I can't wait for next week because we're going to continue this uh, discussion on the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about the speaking gifts, the utterance gifts. And we're going to talk about these areas of prophecy, of speaking in tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. It's going to be a great continuance to the series. Again, if you didn't see last week's episode, go back and watch on the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, and the gift of discerning of spirits. And uh, share this with a friend if you think this will help somebody in their journey on, of learning more about the Holy Spirit and walking in the gifts. I know this will be an encouragement to somebody. I love you guys. I bless you from the bottom of my heart. Can't wait to see you next time. Same place, same time next week. I'll see you soon.